Okay, in this video, we are going to make our own sim mesh. And before I start, let me just get a shout out to my friend Magnus Skaglin. He and I worked together and he was the modeling supervisor. So thanks Magnus for teaching me how to make this a flat mesh because I actually didn't know. Normally I just have, <laughs> I have him make the sim mesh and flat mesh for me but with this character like i found out these i guess they call the sari i need to have them flatten out because if they are not flat and i just wrap uh, let's say my sim mesh exactly the way it is there's going to be cross talk in between this mesh and then obviously it just it will have all kinds of mess. So what we're going to do is flatten it out, wrap it, and it will blend back to this position again. And uh, there's going to be quite a few of mesh, but hopefully I can show you later on why I create uh, so many layers of mesh and just kind of give the flexibility on what you need to do, says, you know, making, let's say like, uh, you want a shot model, smooth out the mesh, or add in wrinkles later on. Okay, so without further ado, let's give it a try. First thing first, I guess I will start by creating a flat mesh. So I'm going to just go here, create a plane. Uh, going to be a good size plane. Move it to the side. Uh, to determine the the resolution, I guess uh, for now I'm gonna match as close as I can. Right now the sari on top of uh of the body is around eleven thousand. So I'm gonna do something similar. That's too much. No. The seventy five, I guess. I guess that's pretty close. We're on 10,000 versus 11,000. So that's actually okay. I'm going to try this. Um, and let me just show you the UV here. Yeah, so for these guys, they look all right. But this is going to be a problem, so which I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to delete history. I think it's plain then the mesh try gonna be vertex position and then gonna be uv ah okay so you see what's happening here basically there's some skewing points because of the of the tassels so let's bring up the uv editor again and so really i think i need a tassel to be on the sides and then have everything flat and then once i run the attribute transferring tool is going to be correct so this might take a while so i think i'm gonna how to do some move and sew. And then I'll fast forward the video and then, and then we'll continue from there.
Okay, so that's all done for the top Saudi. Obviously, you can see changing the UV is probably going to change the texture uh, as well. But this is something that I feel it needs to be done. So whether you just have to ask the modeler to do it for you or you're going to have to do it for yourself. But we're going to try to... I'll spend some time doing the, the bottom sorry as well. But for now, this is the one I want to look at. And... Uh, so if we run the transferring tool again, uh, it should work properly now. Let me just save the scene. To be sure, let's create a plane again. I think 100. Let me just delete history here. Seems quite a bit there. UV. Yes, there you go. If you want to make it better, we can actually just back to that. Let's take a look at both UVs. What you can do is scale your plane UV to be exactly the same as the, the asset. So we'll say something like, like that. And uh, it's gonna it's gonna match quite well actually. So playing and then that. There you go. And then so yeah, then we can actually. Well, looks like maybe. I want to be them. I want to have them on top of each other. So maybe I would be transform, delete history, transfer attribute. There you go. So now both of them on top of each other. I can now wrap the mesh. I might spend some time just kind of line up the corners a little bit better in the UVs, and then what I'm going to do is um, I w I will duplicate duplicate some meshes and we will start putting them together in the next video okay thank you for watching and then uh, stay tuned okay i added in this video just for those people want to see i did this step by step have a a cleaner uv and better matching on the corners and even the, the edge loops it's not perfect for sure but it definitely a lot of work just trying to get it to work i think the end result later on was pretty successful so i thought i'd leave it in but if you feel you already know this feel free just to skip this and uh, move on to the next video but for those you want to watch feel free to enjoy thank you all right so for those of you who stay on a little bit longer and watching the video i can explain a little bit more why i always create my sim mesh for for my cloth rigs generally in production you never know what what modeling would do with the asset and this is not really modeling's fault but it's simply just how the production or the client decides how they want to design the mesh maybe uh it start off with a single sided mesh and then they later decide they want a thickness and then modeling will go back and then add the thickness and now your topologies change your point counts are change so at that point you're gonna really gonna think about you're glad that you made your own sim mesh because 
the final mesh is so unpredictable they can be changing any time but your sim mesh will always be the same because it's coming from you and coming from your own department so this is why i always create my own so as long the mesh silhouette or general outlines are the same you can reuse your sim mesh if they really really change then obviously you have to create a new one but for most of the part you have more consistent look and uh, by by creating your sim mesh then you just in the long run you will save a lot more time and this is kind of why i create my sim mesh and i know this is the speed up process of uh making my own sim mesh it, actually it took a while simply i'm just not a modeler uh, this is probably taking a model a lot quicker and, and even quicker if they just have this idea in mind so when you start working on asset with someone it's always good to talk about what you need starting the project and so they can keep that in mind maybe they can already make a flat mesh for you before they even create a whatever the cloth mesh for the character so yeah something something is worth keeping in mind and i think um hopefully that helps everyone that why i create a sim mesh and then you know try to speed up the process in the long run and just just make things easier uh, in addition going back on what i said about changing the uv is going to change the texture just want to add to that is actually in this stage even if we change the uv it's actually okay because what we're going to do is we're going to flatten out those meshes and then we're going to duplicate them as you will see in the following videos so it's actually not that bad and i mean even we change it now we can actually revert back because all we need is the mesh point position we only need the uv for now to unravel or pelt it to be flat once it's a flat then we can change the uv back or you could even somehow transfer use the transfer attribute and transfer the uv back to the way it is so uh, I, I think we won't worry about that when i say it, it's going to change the texture it's actually probably not that bad um we we can actually just keep it as so we can just keep two sets uh one for us to uh, flatten the mesh and then one we can go back to and that will be the same as how it comes with modeling so it's also something keeping in mind it's not as destructive which is kind of nice thing about being a cfx artist uh, whatever things we do it's actually you know it's there to improve things and less destructive than is destructive so but yeah hopefully that helps